The other day was playing some Magic Arena, and I ended up making like 200 mana, drawing my entire deck, and killing my opponent on turn four in standard. And then I figured out how to make the deck even better, and today I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. If you've been playing Magic for a while, you might remember this hilariously janky against the odd style combo deck built around Morrowind the Nurture, which looked to take advantage of Morrowind's ability to tap to make mana equal to its power by using pump spells that'll untap it and grow its power to make an absurd amount of mana. Well, I recently realized we can bring the Morrowind combo to our current standard format. Actually, we can build a way better version of this hilarious combo in our current standard format. At. So here's the plan. First, we need to play Cami of Whispered Hopes, which is essentially our Marwyn, a new take on Marwyn, actually a better take on Marwyn, since it makes mana of any color rather than just green mana. And now we need to wait to make sure Cami loses Summoning Sickness, which is a little scary. We gotta pass the turn and cross our fingers that our opponent doesn't kill our Cami. Although we do have cards like Shore Up and Slip Out the Back that can protect it from a targeted removal spell. Once we untap with Cami and it loses summoning sickness, that's when the real fun begins. We have a massive 16 spells in our deck that can untap it and also grow its power, shore up Funibus Aju, Witch's Web, and Arachnod Adaptation. So what we do is tap Kami to make a mana and then use one of these spells to untap it and grow its power. Now we can tap our Kami to make even more mana, probably four mana now, depending on what pump spell we have. And then we do it again and again and again until we cast all of these untapping spells that we have in our hand. At this point, our Kami should be tapping for like 10 or more mana, and we should have like 20 mana floating. So the next piece of the puzzle is to refill our hand. We have some mass card draw effects, like Silver Scrutiny, even the score, and Cosmic Epiphany, with the X card draw spells being the best of the bunch, because we can cast them with all of our floating mana, minus two. We want to save two mana so we can cast another untapping spell once we refill our hand. So we cast the huge card draw spell, draw a bunch more of these untap effects, and go back to doing what we were doing before, tapping and untapping Kami to make an absurd amount of mana. The next piece of the puzzle is Lear Disciple of the Drought. Once we find and play Lear, the game is more or less over. Lear lets us flashback all the instant and sorcery spells in our graveyard and also makes our spells uncounterable as a bonus. So once Lear hits the battlefield, we can flashback all of those untapping pump spells that we already used. And then once we make a few hundred mana, we can flashback a silver scrutiny or an even the score to draw literally our entire deck, every single card in our deck. At this point, we should have like 200 mana floating. And the final piece of the puzzle to close out the game is explode Explosive Singularity. We have two copies of Explosive Singularity, each of which can deal 10 damage to our opponent's face. So as we draw our entire deck, we'll draw those. We cast them both, hit our opponent for 20 uncounterable damage, and just close out the game on the spot. And if something goes wrong and our opponent like had life gain, so they're above 20 life, well, we can always flash back our Explosive Singularities to do even more damage. So we can deal up to 40 damage with those spells to win the game, which looks a little something like this. Wanna try to go infinite yourself? Well, you can snag all the cards you need from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. All right, let's see if we can uh, do some ridiculous things in standard against a, a rife... <laughs> A rice puff. Go, go, rice puff. Uh, well, we got a cami, so we keep. I think the rule of this deck is, if we have a cami, we keep. The rest of the hand's kind of medium. No card draw. I think to really go off, we need one more one more untapper, and then a card draw effect. Ooh, top your stomper. All right. Opponent's uh, doing some ramping. A little bit right. Ooh, that's card draw. Okay, actually, we're super close now. Well, now we just got to worry about removal. Domain does have a lot of removal, but if we can untap with Cami, we win. Another Stomper. I think next turn... Next turn, I think we have to play Cami. Even if we don't draw protection. Come on, slip out the back one time. Uh, yeah, we're going to run it out. I mean, cross our fingers. This is the moment of truth. If this lives, the nice thing about playing it this turn is this would be the turn our opponent could play like an Atroxer or something. They'll have seven mana, so maybe they're tempted to do that. But if Cami lives, I think we can win here. Opponent gonna get in for eight. We need Cami to live and hopefully no counter spell. All right, down to 12. About it, opponent passes. Oh God, 
Oh, and they're sharp. Oh my goodness. Okay. We should be good. Well, let's have some fun. So tap for green. Untap it. Hold on to the shore up in case they do try to kill it. Okay. Now tap for four green. And let's do a little witch webbing. Untap it. Up to seven power. Tap it for blue. Yeah, let's just draw some cards. We have the leer in hand. Still want to try to save the shore up. So let's draw seven. I think this is fine. Ooh, all right. Well, one more untapper, two card draw effects. Well, let's witch web, untap it. <laughs> I don't know if our opponent's slow rolling interaction or they just have nothing. Make some blue mana. I mean, since we're out of untappers, minus the shore up, I think we just play the leer and try to cast our graveyard untappers. I mean, if this resolves, things are going to get out of hand. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, <laughs> happy fun times. Which is what? Untap it. Wow, there it is. We slow rolled the shore up. Yeah. Shore up? Do you have more interaction? Oh, if they have two, I'm going to be so sad. Oh, desperation cycle. Oh, it might be happening. It might be happening. Once the hexproof hits. Oh, okay. Fizzle it. Tap it. Leyline binding fizzles. Witch web. Untap it. And, well, now it's full on party time. Untap it. <laughs> so there's a little bit of like hit our spawns, draw some cards, the standard, <laughs> the standard edition. All right. Budget magic time. We can draw a lot of cards by shooting our own swans. And I guess we just start going. Hit our swans. Draw some cards. Swans. Hit our swans. Draw some cards. <laughs> hit our swans. Draw some cards. Hit our swans. Draw some cards. <laughs> what? What can you say? <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, then we will make some mana. And we will untap it. I mean, this should be game. I don't know how, if our opponent doesn't have another removal spell, this is definitely game. We have the card draw in hand. We just draw our whole deck here. Wow, when this goes off, it is so hilarious. Oh no, are they salting? Is it salt time? Rice puff. Come on, rice puff. <laughs> Salty rice puff. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says Magic's 30th anniversary like a rice puff. Uh, well, we will Silver Scrutiny and draw 20. At this point, it doesn't really matter because we have so much card draw. Well, let's tap this 3-drop for 20 mana, and we will untap it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then tap it for some mana, and then... I mean, at some point, I think we should just probably kill him i guess i don't know i don't know how long our opponent's gonna wait as they salty rope over there yeah let's let's be a little respectful and untap our cami <laughs> oh yeah and mm, mm. untap cami mm -hmm. the problem is i'm afraid our opponent's gonna scoop if we don't go for the kill uh okay explosive singularity Ten you uncounterable and some rice salt and explosive singularity. Ten you again and opponent scoops it up. They did not want to let us get in that last 10 damage. Well, no, nah, it was pretty good. Well, over a hundred mana. Little slow, little slow, but we got there. Sweet. Ah, all right, let's uh let's do some more comboing. Some more uh <laughs> some more standard storm essentially. It's kind of standard storm. Ugh. No cami, no keep. Ooh, all right. Cami, two untapper, silver scrutiny. Well, that's a, that is an easy keep. It is the age old question. Does the Kamai live? <laughs> if, it, if it lives, life is great. If it doesn't, then, well, on to the next one. Exuberant fuseling, A. Eh? Sure. We do need, okay, there's a land. Cool. I mean, I feel like, I feel like we just got to go for the, go for the cami next turn, right? I guess if we draw protection, maybe we don't. Our opponent probably has played with fire. 
All right, double double saga. A lot of faces. Sure, opponent gets in for one. We draw tap land. Well, no fear, no fear in Camiville. Run it out. Well, this is it. If our opponent kills it, we scoop and cry. If they don't kill it, we get a turn four storm kill in standard. <laughs> Pretty boss. Oh, bloody contaminator. Okay, sure. That I mean, that's a six six for three. That's a busted card. Bad news about. Bad news opponent. Uh, I think you die here on turn four. Can we go all the way? We should be able to, right? So tap it. Technically, Boon and Biseju is best once we have Leer, although we're tapping them all here, so it doesn't, or we're casting them all here, so it doesn't really matter. All right, tap, untap. Four power. Tap, untap. Six power. Tap, untap. Seven power. Tap. So we have what, 15, 16, 17 mana? Yeah, I guess, yeah, we'll leave three up. Eh, all right, there's a bunch of untappers, that's fine. Uh, yep, yeah. you always wanna leave at least two mana, two mana floating when you cast the big card draw spell or else you won't be able to cast another untapper. All right, tap it, 21 mana, untap it, double hex proof, even the score. I mean, at this point, it feels like it doesn't matter what we do. Let's draw 15, uh-huh. <laughs> And uh, untap it, and tap it. I mean, technically, we don't even need to do anything else, do we? Just tap for red and kill him? Like, we don't even have to draw our entire deck here? Busted, busted. That is turn four. I mean, we could keep going and BM and rub it in and draw our entire deck, but we don't even need to. We drew both explosive singularities, and that's a turn four storm combo kill in standard. <laughs> Ah, sweet, 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 sweet. Wow, this deck is sweet when it works. So as you just saw, when everything goes perfect, we just straight up win the game on turn four. And if we're worried about our opponent killing our Kami, we can wait another turn to try to leave up, slip out the back or shore up. It does make us win a turn later, but still like winning on turn five and making 200 mana and drawing our deck and storming off is still pretty hilarious. The deck is really powerful and it's super funny when it goes off. It's as close to playing like legacy storm and standard as you can possibly get. Although it does have one pretty big problem Problem, which is consistency. The big issue is there's only one Cami of Whispered Hopes and we have to have Cami to win the game and we have to have it live. That turn of having to play it and wait for it to lose summoning sickness gives our opponent that window for removal and if they can kill our Cami, then things really fall apart. Like without the combo, our deck does nothing. It's a bunch of untapping pump spells, no realistic way to win the game. So my question was, how do we make this deck more consistent? We have this really, really cool deck that wins in an amazing way. How do we pull off those amazing wins more often? So technically there's another Kami style creature in standard in Cradle Clear Cutter, which has the same ability. It taps to make mana equal to its power. So in theory, you could do the same thing. The problem is it only makes green mana and just making green mana isn't super helpful because all of our card draw effects are in blue. I tried to find some green card draw and it just doesn't exist in our current standard format. There's no green version of, you know, even the score or whatever. I thought for a minute about trying to add energy refractor and clear cutter so that we could use energy refractor to turn the green mana from clear cutter into blue mana to cast our card draw effects. But then that would just add another kind of inconsistency. Like we need two combo pieces to combo off rather than just one. So we would kind of accidentally be making our deck less consistent Why we're trying to make it more consistent. And then all of a sudden it struck me, what if this was actually an Explorer Pioneer deck. It's obviously awesome in Standard when it goes off, but if we tried to build it in Explorer, what would happen? And I started to brew the deck and I realized moving to Explorer solves pretty much all the consistency issues. In Explorer, we can pull off the same combo even more spectacularly, but we can do it with all green cards. Uh, we still want Leer. We don't really technically need Leer, but it's sweet enough that we want to splash it, but we can make that work. So if we go back to Explorer, we get OG Marwin, the original founder of this deck, to join Kami as a mana producer. So now we don't have to mulligan down to four and sometimes never find a Kami. Like with eight copies of Kami in the deck, with Marwin joining the fray, our odds of having one in our opening hand are like two out of every three games. 
without even mulliganing. And if we're willing to mulligan, and we are definitely willing to mulligan, we should be able to find one pretty much every game. Just as importantly, this also means our odds of drawing more than one cami goes up significantly. Because as you saw in our losses, one of the nightmares is we play the cami and it dies, and then we just do nothing. So now we might actually draw two camis now that we have Marwin as well. So Marwin, of course, only makes green mana. But in Explore, this isn't a problem because we don't actually need blue to draw cards anymore. Instead, we can use Return to the Wild Speaker in Rishkar's expertise. They draw cards equal to the power of our huge cami or our huge Marwin. Rishkar's expertise is especially good because it lets us play a card mana value five or less for free. So this gives us a way we can put Leer into play without even having any blue mana so we can actually be completely mono green. Although technically we are playing some blue lands just to, in case we want to hard cast Leer. And then the only question left at this point, now we can do it all in mono green. We get eight camis, we get green card draw. How do we close out the game? Like we could stick with the same plan and try to cast explosive singularities. We could play an upgraded version like Banefire is kind of like explore explosive singularity just make a ton of mana and throw this huge uncounterable burn spell at our opponent's face but then i realized there's an even better way a card called bull strength bull strength is the literal perfect card for this deck like as good as you can possibly imagine it's a two mana instant that untaps a creature gives it plus two plus two so it works with our combo is another way to untap our cameo or marwin and it gives the creature trample so now we can win with combat damage we just do our combo and one of our combo pieces bull strength that we'd want to play anyway is going to incidentally give trample so we make a few hundred mana and then we use tie for stand to dump all that mana onto our huge cami make it a 500 power creature with trample and indestructible and hexproof and just swing at our opponent in that way which ends up looking a little bit something like this all right more cami combos some uh, some storming some twiddle storm explore twiddle storm and uh well I mean, that one looks pretty good. Only one on tappers a little bit. A little bit disappointing. We we really want more on tappers, but I guess the good news is our deck is full of them. I like that we have multiple multiple cami effects. That's definitely one of the upsides compared to the standard version. There's just like there's more of the important combo piece. Uh opponent. Rafines and oh, are we getting grease fanged? No grease. Ooh. No Grease Fang, that's another Untapper though. All right, well, the nice thing about having a hand like this with Kami and Marwin, we can feel pretty good about running one out next turn and oh, that's a clock. And even if it dies, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's a big attack. I mean, well, we really need this to live because our opponent has a really nice, really nice draw here on the play. Like, I think we are probably dead next turn if we don't win, so we better win. Opponent, Thalia's Lieutenant, grows the Dork. Yeah, we're definitely dead next turn. Cathar's Commando, grows the Dork. Well, all right. Bring it, humans, bring it. <laughs> oh, well, we will drop to two, and who oh, Rishkar's expertise? Well, here goes nothing. Adaptation, untap it. Tap it for some mana. Blossoming defense. Little little ritual. Blossoming defense, a ritual in this deck. Adaptation number two. Untap it. Tap it. Boon of Untap it. And I think we should tap it. Rishkar's expertise. Draw ten. Uh, well, free Boon of Might as well. Untap it. Tap Marwin. And... Let's draw some more cards. One thing to say about uh, playing the mono green build, because our card draw effects are based on our creature's power rather than X spells like in the standard build, uh, we actually got to be aware of not milling ourselves out. Like we can end up in these weird positions where we can't draw as many cards as we want. Uh, not going to happen here though. Like we, we're we fine here. We can, I mean... Yeah, untap the untap the Marwood. Tap it. So 86 mana floating. Draw draw the rest of our deck. So this is our last card draw effect. Without milling out. But that is that is fine, because this is game. Like we could keep going for a while. But uh Tiver Stand is going to 
seal the deal here. All right, there's the bull's drag. Untap it, trample. Uh, Tiver stand. Nah, how about 100? 100's a nice, a nice even number. <laughs> How do you feel about a opponent Yorgos? All right, Argo opponent. Boom. We will attack. Attacks declared. Would you like to block humans? Yorgo opponent. Would you like to block our 127, 127 trampling X proof Marwin and uh, that's what you call a combo. That's what you call a combo. <laughs> Got him. All right. Combo time. This time in Explorer, playing some uh, Explorer Twiddle Storm, I guess. And this hand looks horrible. <laughs> Somehow, we went to Explorer so we could play eight camis and we still don't draw one. Although that's just unlucky. I think the math is with eight copies of Cami, now that we have Marwin in the deck, I think it's 65% to have one roughly. This hand's fine. Not super exciting because there's no card draw. But, I mean, we got a Marwin, we got protection, we got one untapper, we now have two untappers. So we just need to find some card draw. Question's gonna be, do we run out Marwin? Ooh, Voice of the Blessed. Well, if our opponent's playing Voice of the Blessed, we probably run out Marwin. Nah, I, I'm not super concerned about removal out of our opponent's deck. Opponent, inspiring overseer to draw a card. Well, now our Marwin's gonna live at least. We have a ton of protection. Ugh. Even more protection. We just need a Rishkar's expertise. Or Return to the Wild Speaker. Either one. Either one of our card draw effects. And we are good to go. Uh huh. About it. Yeah. We just gotta pass. There's no way there's no way to win here. We don't have trample anyway. Teleportation circle. Alright. So opponent's gonna get a lot of a lot of card draw value. We could use some of that. Bonet hits us with the overs here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not really under immediate threat of death, which is nice. Bonet's gonna blink, draw a card. So we should have a couple turns at least to find to find a. Ooh, there it is. Return of the Wild Speaker. All right. Well, here we go. Blossoming defense as a ritual. Tab the Morrowind. Can we tie for stand? I think we gotta untap ones first. I think we gotta untap. Now we can Tiver stand for six. Tiver stand had so much mana over the course of a game. Untap, tap it for 15. Return of the Wild Speaker, draw 15. And go back to untapping. The only awkward thing right now is we don't have a way to get Leer on the battlefield. We do have another Return of the Wild Speaker, so we can draw. We can draw 19 more cards. <laughs> yeah, Marwin, this is actually a case, because we didn't draw any Rich Cards expertises, this is actually a case where the mono green aspect of Marwin's actually a little annoying. Oh, all right, untap it. Tap it. Oh, we can't, oh, this is very awkward. We can't draw any more cards without milling out. 120 mana floating. So tap and untap. I mean, this is a huge, oh. Wait, oh no, oh no. Oh, we don't have trample. Oh my, oh no, I think we're fizzling. No, I just assumed that we had hit a bull strength, but out of all these pump spells and drawing all these cards, no bull strength. That is, that is so awkward. Okay, well. Uh, I guess we play some camis. <laughs> that is unfortunate. <laughs> we, you're, so you're probably thinking, well, just draw more cards. The problem is our card draw draws equal to the greatest power of a creature we control. And Marwin's power is greater than the number of cards in our library at the moment. So if we actually did that, we would just, we would die. We would mill out. <laughs> so we can't do that. We can keep growing Marwin. Oh, we're gonna pass with 101 mana floating. We can attack, but it doesn't have trample, so our opponent can easily block it. Wow. Well, don't let this ruin your your opinion of the deck. I think that's just, <laughs> I think that's just kind of the low roll. Uh, well, I mean, I guess the good news af uh, after all this is we should just win next turn. 
Like, next turn, we should be able to... Wow, it's very, very unlikely that we wouldn't win this turn. Very, very unlikely. But now, next turn... So, Marwin goes back to 10 power. So, it's still making 10 mana. That lets us cast the Rishkar's Expertise and the Return of the Wild Speakers. And we have the Leer. And we actually have the blue lands and also the Kami's now. Wow, opponent's just going to tap out. So, I think, I think this turn, we are literally guaranteed to win. I don't think... Uh, even even our luck and our punts cannot mess this up. <laughs> Found it's growing the voice of the blessed. We draw land. So, tap Marwin a bunch. So, I think we want to try to draw the rest of our deck. We have 15 cards left in our deck. So, just, yeah, let's pump Marwin to 15. Rish cards expertise to draw every card left in our deck. So, now we're not going to worry. There's all of our bull strings. Now, we put Lear into play. And now I kind of want to see just how far we can go. All right, let's 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 get Trample for sure before we somehow forget. All right, Bull Strength, Bull Strength. All the spells being cast. Yeah, 32 mana floating. Untap it, tap it, up to 54. Untap it, <laughs> tap it, up to 77. Uh, let's untap it. The only problem is I want to see if we can deal like a thousand damage with this Marwin. The only problem is if we do this too long, oh, here comes the emotes. If we do this too long, our opponent might just scoop and we might not see any damage. But I mean, we want to see how far we can go. So what we got to do is we need to cast a... Uh, I'm just so afraid that if we don't cast things quickly, our opponent's going to scoop. What we want to do is cast a Tiver stand and see if our opponent... Uh, see if our opponent sticks around. Because once we Tiver stand... Yeah, I guess we can return to the Wild Speaker. No no card draw, though. Just pumping. Yeah, pump, pump. Cast it all. Once we Tiver stand, this Marwin is going to attack for the most obscene amount of mana possible. This does kind of feel like Storm. So we tap for 60. Tiver stand. Oh, we have so much mana. <laughs> The best Tiver stand yet. 195. So Marwin. Oh, it's it's getting huge. So now Marwin's tapping for 250-ish. Tiver stand. Now we can cast this one for 300. No scoops. No scoops. No scoops. I mean, I feel a little bad because our opponent's tapped out. So we and we have trample, and they know we have trample. Uh let's let's Tiver stand for a bunch. Uh Marwin. Five five hundred fifty-five. That's a big Marwin. Tap for five fifty-five. Tiver stand. Hold. 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 We just want to get a thousand opponent. We're just going a thousand. That's it. That's it. That's right. Just a thousand, and then we'll attack you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so. Oh, we deserve that. We deserve that. Well, we didn't quite see the thousand power Marwin, but golly, was that a sweet game? Oh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And that's how you make all the mana, draw your entire deck, and pseudo storm combo kill on turn four in standard and as a bonus in explorer. If you want even more magic, make sure to check out the video where I made the saltiest deck possible just to see if anyone would even play with me, or maybe the one where I dealt the most damage ever in standard.